So, the afternoon is dragging on. Your day just seems like it's never going to end, and you feel like you could do with a little snack. Well, I'm in that position, and while I was in the store the other day, I ran into a bag of these. Chirps. Cute name. They are chips. These ones are uh, cheddar cheese flavor. Uh, but the main difference is, is that these are made with cricket flour. At least part of the part of the ingredients list is cricket flour. They are actual crickets that are ground up into a meal, mixed with flour, uh, and baked into a chip in this case. Now, entomophagy, or the consumption of insects for protein, is not new. Uh, cultures around the world uh, have eaten bugs, insects, worms um, for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years as a part of their daily diet. Whether you're talking about chapulines in uh, Mexico, um, you know, sago worms in Indonesia, uh, you know, mopani worms in southern Africa, those sorts of leaf cutter ants, uh, European giant water beetles, uh, all these things. People have been eating bugs uh, for, since time immemorial. It hasn't really caught on here in the U.S. just yet. It's, it's, it's gaining momentum, but very, very slowly, which is why I was excited to see this, because this is the first time I've actually seen an insect-based uh, product on the, in the main shelves of a grocery store. You see them as gag gifts, like you know, the the uh, the lollipop with uh, um, you know a scorpion in it, or or the the tequila flavored ones with uh, the the the, the agave worm uh, inside of it. Those are kind of gag gifts, and this is the first time that an actual mainstream product has been available. Um, it's becoming more and more popular. The problem that we're having in the United States particularly, it's the, a lot of the rest of the world has uh, no, ha, has no hang-ups about eating insects. They're, it's just a part of the diet. Some people like them, some people don't, but that's fine. It, it's still a part of the cuisine. We ha really, really don't have that tradition here, and so we sort of grew up thinking e eating bugs is gross. Eh, no, that's not something you're supposed to eat. Uh, um, and we have a couple of really big hurdles to get over before this becomes popular. One is the ick factor. Um, because we have just haven't grown up with a tradition of having eaten bugs before, and it's not a normal thing for us. Uh, we sort of we sort of kind of freak out about it. They're they're creepy crawlies. They're not meant for food. They're they're horror movie staples. <laughs> um, the second, well, I guess corollary to that is how to actually eat them. Now, if you have chapulines like here, these are basically Mexican crickets that are raised specifically for food. You know, they're 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 uh, cultivated. I guess you could say. Uh, specifically for human consumption, and uh, they are lightly roasted. Um, these ones are, I think, chili lime. <laughs> but uh, the ick factor here, your treat has feet. <laughs> it has legs, it has wings, it has little beady eyes that look back at you and say, don't eat me. So eh, it's a little off-putting for us who you know, we, we tend to sort of like to anthropomorphize anything that has um, recognizable body parts, which is a lot of why we don't like to uh, view our food as a living thing. So you don't eat cows, you eat beef, you don't eat pigs, you eat pork. So uh, if you can recognize the food, uh, and I suppose if it can recognize you back, we have a problem with it, and it's branding too. So, um, something that is uh, has become distasteful just by some association, we like to rebrand it if we can. So, uh, for instance, prunes. Um, people go, eh, old people have old people eat prunes because they need more fiber. Blah, eh, I don't like them. So, big ad, uh, big change to the campaign. 
they said, okay, we're not going to label them as prunes anymore. We're going to label them as dried plums. And everyone said, ooh, dried plums. And look at all this fiber they have. They're really healthy. Oh, I don't like prunes, but I love dried plums. They're the same thing. They just re repackage them. Well, a good way to get into entomophagy is to remove the legs and wings and the eyes to uh, process the, pro the product into something that's a little bit more palatable, a little less recognizable as what it was. Um, so it's a good start with uh, you know, putting them into a chip or into baked products. And a lot of people are saying that we need to eat more bugs because they're a lot more sustainable, they're a lot easier to raise, and per pound they have more protein than pretty much any other source of meat or protein that we have. They take, uh, for instance, crickets, take approximately two pounds of food over their, over their rather short lifetime, um, about, about two pounds of food to produce one pound of edible protein. And you compare that with something like beef cattle, which takes on average about 25 pounds of food to produce one pound of actual edible, uh, edible meat. And that goes across the board with all the resources that it takes to uh, raise them. Uh, water takes a lot less water to raise insects than it does to uh, raise larger livestock. Land, obviously you can have stacked trays of millions of crickets or mealworms or whatever in the space that you can put 500 cows. Um, you know, you can have one warehouse and, and produce, you know, millions of crickets. So it's economies of scale that you're talking about. And it's just getting the buying public to buy in <laughs> to the idea of edible insects. And this is a good start. So with that said, um, these chirps, they, uh, they, they advertise 20 grams of protein per bag or about four grams per serving. So if you do the math, that means they, they expect this to be five servings. They don't know me very well. Um, so 25 chirps, they even have a helpful little graphic on the back here. 25 of these chips has as much protein as one egg white. Um, oh, here we go. Gallons of water to make one pound of meat. One gallon of water to make a pound of crickets or 2,000 gallons of water to produce a pound of beef. So there you go, like I was saying earlier. Um, these use, oh, I was saying flour. Uh, these actually use uh, sto these corn, these are corn chips um, with uh, sunflower and safflower oil. Uh, navy beans, that's interesting. Cricket flour, pea flour, uh, cheddar seasoning, which has has some actual cheese in it, but other stuff. Um, and a bunch of other seasonings and chia seed. Okay, I was wondering, there are black bits on, these, on the picture. So I was wondering what those were. So let's try them out. Oh my God, it's full of bugs. No, just kidding. So, okay. Ooh. The chips are smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting a, uh, you know, a standard tortilla chip sized chip, but they're a little smaller. And yeah, the black bits are uh, not cricket parts. They are chia seeds. So, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So the, all of the other ingredients I mean, obviously the corn, that's the main, that's the main binding ingredient, but the, the uh, green pea flour and, um, what else was there? Um, yeast extract, the chia seeds, all, all that. Oh, the navy beans, that's what it was. Um, they definitely changed the flavor from a typical corn chip. Um, these are fairly lightly seasoned. They're not overly salty or overly cheesy for that matter. Now the problem, the problem that I have with um, eating insects in general, the concept doesn't bother me as much. Um, at first I wasn't sure if it would bother me because i am I'm been raised in a, an American culture so um, whether or not I would be too grossed out to even try it, but 
uh, managed to try them. The flavor and texture of insects, um, the way that I have prepared them in the past, at least, uh, is really what bugs me. Pardon the pun. Um, that sort of the that sort of chitinous exoskeleton that all insects have, um, and a lot of arthropods, uh, are is it, yeah. I can taste that chitin, and particularly when I cook them. Um, it sort of reminds me of when I was very young and slightly more sociopathic, um, young child with a uh, magnifying glass on an anthill. Um, that smell of burning protein, um, whether it's you know burning insects or if you've ever uh, smelled hair that's been burnt for any reason, um, I get that flavor whenever I eat whenever I've eaten insects. The other thing is is. Uh, they're either too crunchy because it's a, a thick exoskeleton or they're chewy to the like when I've uh, I've tried a couple of different um, basically caterpillars or worms and it, it sort of it, it sort of feels like I'm chewing on a condom it's it's or a rubber or a rubber band um, with something kind of squishy on the inside. It's it's kind of off-putting to me. It's, it's really the texture more than the flavor or even the concept. It's just really unpleasant. These, however, you don't really taste that chitin-y flavor. It, it really is everything else um, really covers up the flavor. So again, um, this is a great way to get uh, insect protein into your diet if that's something that's important to you. Um, without that particular flavor. Um, I don't know that it's a great way to really get into, you know, sort of hardcore entomophagy because um, it is so far removed from the original form. But, you know, as a snack, it's not bad. Um, price point, it's, um, uh, it's comparable to another bag of chips. Um, some settling may occur. This is uh, about maybe three-fifths of the bag is air. Some settling may occur, of course. But uh, so per pound, it's a little more expensive than your typical bag of chips, but. Uh, for an alternative source of protein, um, without a, without as much fat, it's actually pretty, a pretty decent ch uh, choice for a snack food. I will uh, put the caveat, however, if you're allergic to shellfish, you may want to try like one chip and then nothing else for a while. See if you have a reaction um, because shellfish, like crab, shrimp, lobster um, are arthropods and so are insects <laughs> so if you're allergic to shellfish there is a possibility that you might be allergic to insects as well so tread lightly but um, that being said I for the rest of you I encourage you to branch out a little bit try uh, some insect based products see if you like them it may be the wave of the future so until next time, this is Mike Uyak. Happy eating.